Hi everybody. In this little video, I'm going to talk about relay selection. The screen you see up there is from uh, DigiKey Electronics. It's an electronics parts provider. They've got a huge selection of components. Good place for us to see uh, how many relays are actually out there and what's involved. I'm going to start by going to the search box and we'll just type relay and see what we come up with. Now you can see down here the top results shows power relays, signal relays, solid state relays. Uh, 13,000 power relays. Those are the relays that are good for currents over 2 amps, for driving large motors and things like that. Signal relays are used for control systems. Um, they don't usually have to have as much current. So a signal relay is 2 amps or less and you know usually a, a lower voltage. Uh, much less expensive too. Both of those relays are electromechanical. Uh, the third choice of relays are solid state relays you see down there. Those are um, transistorized. Those are using semiconductors. They have no moving parts, no coils, no contacts. Uh, they're very fast and operating and usually are very, very small packages. However, they do have uh, more sensitivity to electrostatic discharge and, and things like that. Since we're going to be using relays in a control environment, let's choose signal relays. There's only 6,381 of those. You can see that there in the results. And look at all the choices we have on, on how to thin things out. You can go to the manufacturers. Here's all the manufacturers. DigiKey carries, uh, covers with relays. Uh, the packaging is how they ship them to you. Um, the relay types, can be automotive relays, uh, general purpose relays, RF relays, telecommunications relays, safety relays. So we could thin it down that way. Uh, it could be a latching relay or a non-latching. Most of our relays we're going to be looking at are non-latching relays. Latching relays, when you turn them on, they stay on and you have to apply another voltage to another coil to turn them off. Non-latching relays, when you apply power to the coils, they'll turn on, but as soon as you relieve that power, the relay relaxes. The first thing you want to look at when you're choosing a relay is the coil voltage. Now, what voltage do you plan to use to drive this thing? Is this a, uh, are we using a 5 volt DC signal, perhaps from an Arduino uh, or other TTL logic device? Are we going to be using 24 volts DC, uh, uh, which is a typical voltage used in control, control systems? Are we going to use a 120 volts AC? or 110 volts AC, you know, line voltage, or are we going to go up to 240 volts AC for our coil? So we have to look at the coil voltage and choose the appropriate one. Uh, just in the interest of um, this exercise, let's choose 24 volts DC. Uh, the contact forms, the, of course, that's the stacking. Is your relay double pole, double throw, double pole, single throw, single pole, single throw? You can decide on those things and screen out the selections. Uh, how much current can the contacts handle? Well, we can go anywhere from 10 milliamps here all the way up to about 2 amps. Because we chose a signal relay, they don't go over 2 amps. What's the voltage our relay can switch? So on the contacts themselves, uh, is it a small 10 volt that they have to switch? That would be a very small contact. Or are we going up to 10,000 volts? Very, very large voltage. So we're not interested in the switching voltage itself. Let's just apply the filter for 24 volt DC signals. And you can see down at the bottom here, we have about 25 pages of relays, all different kinds, all different packages um, for us to choose from. I think just for the interest of uh, experimentation, let's go for the very first one, the NEC uh, relay right here from Kemet. So we're gonna go to the uh, the actual relay page here looks like we've got a good relay um, the data sheet is right here so let's have a look at the data sheet and see if we can learn more about this little Kemet relay click on data sheet and in the moment it'll download the Kemet relay the overview gives you a description a narrative description of the relay to let you know right or whether it's you're close to getting the relay you want and here's some of the strengths of the actual relay uh, we can see here there's a a through hole version for printed circuit boards and a surface mount version for printed circuit boards you, you can tell by the leads in the bottom and we've got some information there's some mechanical um, drawings for the relay and here's how the uh, contacts are laid out 
You can see the coils are connected to pins 1 and 12 on all three of these guys. 1 and 12. And the contacts, the center contact is on pin 4 and 9. The normally closed contact is on 3 and 10. And the normally open contact is on 5 and 8. And they've got a couple other options here. This data sheet covers a large number of relays. You can see that they produce. Um, there's some more mechanical drawings and some electrical characteristics. And here's the specifications for the relay. Um, you can see here the contact ratings are 60 watt ratings, 125 volts. The maximum select, uh, the maximum voltage it can handle will be 220 volts for the uh, contacts. Maximum current, 2 amps. And uh, more information about the contacts, the, the internal resistance of the contacts and things like that, vibration resistance, coil temperatures, all that sort of stuff. That's the contacts. Here's the coils. Now it depends on which relay you've got which coil you have. So let's say we chose a 24 volt uh, coil we talked about before. The 24 volt coil has a resistance of about uh, about 2,800 ohms. Uh, it operates, it will operate at 18 volts even though it's a 24 volt coil it'll operate as low as 18 volts and it'll release when the voltage is less than 2.4 volts. And that's for the non-latching relay. And then specifications for the latching relay and the double latching relay as well. Okay, and here's more, more coil information. And this page um, talks a little bit about the packaging, the, the artwork on the top of the relays. So you can see the manufacturer, the country of origin, the date code, when it was manufactured and what factory manufactured it. It's all in that code. Uh, the CSA markings and the part number. And that's about it for relay selection. You can see that there's a lot of relays out there depending on your requirements and your, your price point.